In this video, we're going to go over the very basic setup to get SkyTrack running. Uh, it assumes we've already installed SkyTrack and we're going in for the first time. It's going to take us to the Setup tab here. In the Setup tab, there's a bunch of uh, sub tabs with different setups. We're not going to worry about most of these. The default works just fine. We'll cover uh, more of these setup options in another video. but. Just going to review the very basic things to get us going here. Um, we need to enter in a site. That's the most important setup. Uh, we're getting this error message just because right now we're saying our time zone is at zero and the computer's at negative four. Once we've completed our site setup, if you still get this error message coming up, uh, don't ignore it. Pay attention to it uh, because it is important that our site in SkyTrack measures our computer time zone as well matches the time zone set up in the mount. We'll just enter in a name for our site. And we need to enter our latitude, longitude. It is always going to be a um, positive value. For each of these. If, if you're concerned I'm telling the world exactly where my observatory is, don't. That's not really my location. Um, so if we're in the southern hemisphere we change this to south of course. If we're on the east side of the prime meridian then our longitude would be east. But I'm in North America, so it's going to be a west value. Elevation, if you don't know your elevation, check your smartphone. You might have a GPS app there. That'll give you your elevation. The UTC offset is the number of hours that you are from the, um, the coordinated uh, universal time line. Um, again, in North America, that would be a negative value for me. Um, I'm Eastern Standard Time, which is minus 5, but we're in daylight savings right now, so I would enter in minus 4. So this value needs to reflect daylight savings time if you have daylight savings time. These viewing limits are optional, but they're, they're very useful when, um, when you want to see what's currently visible um, at your site. And so my observatory has a tree to the north, so I can't see anything lower than 40 degrees. So I put 40 degrees in there. And then for the rest of the directions, I'm going to put in 20, which is, uh, I have to be at least 20 degrees up to see over my observatory walls. Um, so that's it for our, for our site setup. These we want to keep check probably because that again is just setting this this very critical uh, UTC offset value so it's always going to compare on startup to the computer and when we connect to the mount if uh, the ASCOM driver for the mount can give us the UTC offset it'll give us that value and all those have to match. So I'm going to save that and I didn't get that error message because uh, this is correct now at minus four. If it didn't agree to the computer again, I'd get that error message. I can double check to see if, approximately, to see if these are correct by going over to the satellites tab here. And on this world map, look for the little red plus sign. That indicates your location, your viewing location. So if that looks roughly right, then we probably did okay in putting, up, putting in these setups. Next thing I want to do is um, download a TLE file. A TLE file is a um, satellite orbital description file. It has all these different parameters here in it. And the software uses those parameters to calculate the positions, the current uh, positions of the satellites. 100 brightest is a, a good one to start off with because those are very bright satellites. You can actually see most of them with the naked eye. I prefer this one. It's more of an extensive list and you'll always have something that's visible where 
with the hunter brightest you might have to wait for a while till the satellite becomes visible at your location so it's loaded uh over uh, 4700 satellites and calculate the positions this file you should download it each before each evening that you go out to, to view um, it's nice if it's uh, if it's no older than 24 hours because the the orbits do change and get adjusted and um, that'll get reflected in the TLE files um, so we got that loaded if we go to our satellites tab we can see we have a bunch of listings of satellites that are currently visible i can click on one and see where it is um, we need to connect to our telescope and we're going to show connecting through a nascom driver so i'm going to choose my driver so you would look for um, the ascom driver for your particular mount if it's not there you'll need to either go to the ascom website or to the manufacturer of the mount website to download the ASCOM driver. I'm going to use the simulator that comes with the install of ASCOM, just for demo. And there's an option here that you have to select before you connect to your mount, whether you want to do continuous tracking. So if that's uh, clicked, we're going to do continuous tracking. If it's unchecked, then we're going to do a leap ball style, leapfrog style of tracking. And I'm going to explain in a subsequent video what those two tracking methods look like. Um, I'm going to do continuous because I'm going to show one more setup value. And this is only if you're doing continuous tracking. So I connect to my mount. It's going to give this little warning message. And it's just saying that continuous tracking sends a move access command to the mount, which tells the mount to move in a certain direction and it'll continue to slew in that direction until we tell it um, to stop or go in a different direction the warning is just saying should your computer malfunction or you lose connection to your telescope and you're doing continuous tracking your mount may continue to slew in one direction um, so you should have access to the mount where you could stop it or unpower it if uh, something like that were to occur Because this is the first time I've asked for continuous tracking with this driver, it's going to ask me for a calibration. And we're going to just say yes. What this is going to do, um, unfortunately, different um, authors of ASCOM drivers interpret the move access command in, in different ways, um, namely in, in different directions. So what this is going to do, we're going to start it. It's going to move the telescope over to the, to the west of the meridian and then it's going to move the RA axis with a positive rate and the declination with a positive rate just for a short period of time just so it can see how that driver interprets the direction that the mount should move in and as I said uh, between some different mounts they do interpret that in different directions so that's all we're doing. When it slews over to the east, it's also going to do another check here. And that's just checking how often the mount updates its, its uh, position. It's important that we get fresh coordinates when we ask the mount where exactly it is when we're satellite tracking. Uh, you might find for your mount number five fails. Uh, that might still be OK. Um, it just means it's not optimum um, that the position coordinates are a little older than what we would like to get nice smooth tracking um, it says here it succeeded so if step five fails it'll warn here that it's not optimum but it'll probably still work for some continuous tracking so I'm gonna close that so at this point we are ready to start uh, satellite tracking the other reminder is your computer time. It's very important that you get it as accurate as possible. There are ways to adjust for that while you're tracking. And we're going to go over some of these tracking adjustments in that um, in a subsequent video.
but at this point we're ready to start tracking. I'm going to click on a satellite that's that's up and visible and I'm going to click start tracking and away it goes and we're going to see this red circle which is the mount indicator where it is is going to come over on this little blue dot which is our satellite and it's going to start tracking when it turns green it's in field of view and that's it so next video we'll go over some of these tracking adjustments and what you can do to get the satellite nicely aligned in your field view